Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, The Benefits of Active Hexose Correlated Compounds, AHCC, and Cancer. My name is Max Langers, and I am the Functional Medicine Consultant at QL Labs, the proud sponsor of today's webinar. I will be your moderator for the presentation to give you a little background about QL Labs. We are a healthcare professional supplement company with the mission of providing safe, unique, and efficacious products to both doctors and their patients. We make a promise to deliver products with clinically backed ingredients and dosages shown to be effective in humans. We would like to remind you that your active participation is important throughout the webinar. Right now, I have everyone on mute to avoid background noise that may distract you from listening to the discussion. During the webinar, you'll have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter, Dr. Gio Espinoza, by typing your questions into the Q&A section of the control panel located at the bottom of your screen, appropriately labeled Q&A. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. And without further ado, I would now like to introduce Dr. Gio Espinoza. Dr. Gio Espinoza is a, re a renowned naturopathic doctor recognized as an authority in integrative and functional urology. Dr. Gio is the founder and director of Integrative and Functional Urology Center at New York University Langone Medical Center and lectures internationally on the application of integrative and functional medicine. He's the author of the Amazon best-selling prostate cancer book, Thrive, Don't Only Survive. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gio. Uh, we're now going to begin and take it away. All right. Well, good evening, everyone, or good afternoon. I guess this will be recorded and played whenever anyone wants to play it. So uh, good morning, if that's when you get to see this webinar. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to, uh, to, to lecture um, and speak on this topic of AHCC and cancer. Is a, cancer is a, uh, I have a strong vendetta against cancer. Uh, I see too many people dying from it, uh, uh, family members, friends, friends of friends, uh, friends uh, of friends who are young and with small children at home. And, um, I, you know, I have this strong passion and goal of, you know, doing anything I can to figure out, hey, how do we, how do we prevent this disease from even occurring in, a, in the first place? You know, how do we, how do we create a micro environment in our bodies that's actually hostile to cancer cells? And um, so, uh, uh, you know, this, this topic is near and dear to my heart. So I hope that, uh, you know, all the research and um, clinical experience that I have dealing with cancer uh, is helpful to you throughout this uh, presentation. So why don't we get started, huh? All right, so uh, disclosure, I'm, I am also director and co-founder of, of a great company called XY Wellness, which of course, um, uh, sells AHCC. Um, it's, uh, and then, of course, uh, this uh, lovely webinar is, is uh, uh, sponsored by QOL Labs. So I want to thank, uh, thank QOL for um, uh, putting this webinar together, and thanks, Max, for doing so. All right, so cancer, that's the beast. <laughs> cancer is the beast. It, it's, um, so cancer is responsible for 13% of all deaths in the world. Okay, and that's a you know uh, that's a, a very high amount. So about eight million deaths around the world is a result of cancer. Um, so um, you you all have horrific images in your heads, right? Of either um, your own cancer patient or a family member or friend uh, that they go through the process, they get diagnosed. Um, they go through perhaps uh, aggressive therapies, uh, they lose their hair, they become weak, they become fragile, um, they become cachectic. Uh, and these are just horrible images that we have. Uh, and, and, and um, you know, so it behooves us to figure out a couple of things. Number one, of course, how do we prevent cancer from occurring in the first, in the first place? Number two, if you do have cancer, if you or your patient develops cancer, what are the, the holistic approaches? What are the natural approaches that uh, can do one of two things? Can actually um, help with inhibiting or reducing the pro progression of that disease? Or how can, you know, what can we do to minimize the side effects of the, uh, of the treatments of the disease? You know, I happen so i'm a naturopathic doctor as you saw in my intro and i work 
mostly with medical doctors. And, you know, I have this, you know, so I don't have a whole lot of negative things to say about medical doctors, unlike other people in our, in our integrative and holistic field, you know, um, other than, you know, the oncology group is definitely a, ver you know, a challenging group to work with because um, they, they essentially do not allow, you know, any, uh, any nutraceuticals in any regimen, which is completely backwards way of thinking. Because what we're trying to do is if conventional therapies are required, then why don't we do things to prevent uh, the, you know, the, the, the damage to the healthy cells? Why don't we do things to, you know, keep our immune system strong and healthy because our immunity is everything, or at least a big part of, of you know, fighting and beating cancer. So um, they're just a, a tough group. The, the good news is that I deal a lot with prostate cancer, although I've done some research with numerous cancers, and I don't, <laughs> I don't typically have to work with uh, oncologists all that much. Uh, but just when I do, it, it definitely gets a little uh, tricky and hairy. Um, and then, of course, you, you, the, the worst thing is that now your patient is confused. Uh, you know, my oncologist says I take, not to take any nutrients or any dietary supplements that can potentially help. And, but you're saying, hey, AHCC or something else may work. So it puts them in an awkward situation, and, and which then puts us in an awkward, awkward situation. So let's continue. So worldwide burden of cancer in men. So, um, you, know, case, you know, in terms of cases or, or men diagnosed with cancer is about 7 million. And out of those, about 42 million die from the disease. Uh, of course, prostate cancer is the second most diagnosed cancer in men. And it's about the sixth or uh, seventh uh, leading cause of death in, in, in men. Um, lung cancer, liver cancer, stomach cancer, uh, very popular. And you notice that um, specifically in men, um, bladder cancer, it's much more, pop, more, much more common uh, in men than it is in women. So typically, so one out of three, you know, the ratio is three to one, male to women that get diagnosed and die from bladder cancer. So, so it's much more common in men. Um, and I don't know that there's a hormonal aspect to that. Um, and we know that, of course, cigarette smoking is a huge contributor to bladder cancer, not only lung cancer, but bladder cancer as well. Um, but, you know, I don't know that that's a result of more men smoking than women. I'm not quite sure why that is. All right. So then in women, of course, the most uh, uh, diagnosed cancer is breast cancer. Um, also leads to a good uh, amount of deaths uh, in terms of breast cancer. Uh, colorectal cancer, lung cancer, stomach cancer, those are the top uh, ones. And then, of course, the female cancers with, really, with related to uh, female organs, uterine cancer, ovarian cancer, are um, um, part of the top 10. So let's talk about AHCC, active hexose correlated compound. Great compound is a mushroom, is based out of a mushroom, and there's like a, a pat, patented uh, approach towards making the final product. Um, the product, I believe, was developed in the University of Tokyo around 1987, and it's been used uh, throughout Asia, and certainly in Japan, as uh, a medicinal food of some sort uh, for cancer patients specifically. Um, so this is a pro so really it it it's a it's a a process that starts with the shiitake mushroom. Um, you probably eat plenty of of those mushrooms uh, in meals and restaurants and so forth. And then there's a whole process where um, the molecular weight is reduced to about five thousand daltons. That's important because the the higher the weight the less absorbable a material is, particularly mushrooms or most materials. The lower the weight, then the, the more absorbable it is. So um, through a, a very sophisticated process, um, AATC is created where not only is it effective, but it's, you know, it's effective because one of, one of the reasons anyway, because it's, it's, because it's absorbable. Okay, so... 
AHCC is known as a natural to, to, to activate natural killer cells. By the way, let me just say this. You may want to, I, I don't read off my slides that much. And you, you may want to jot things down as I speak um, because um, I, I'm just, I just, you know, I, I was told once by a presenter, hey, you know, I, I can read. I, you don't have to read each slide. You can just tell me, you know, more beyond the slide with regards to PowerPoints. And I, I took that you know, to me, you know, I took that to heart. And so I don't really read much from a slide or at least, you know, line by line. So you, you may want to, and, and these slides will be available to you uh, after the recording is uh, is done. Okay. So as mentioned, it's a, it's a cultured mycelia medium where, um, where it, you know, the use of, of shiitake mushrooms are uh, processed and cultivated into uh, about 5,000 uh, 5, Daltons to make it more absorbable. And, and that's done to, through um, the use of hot water and there's an enzymatic process that occurs uh, to reduce the molecular weight. So let's talk about the immune system. And again, you know, the immune system is a highly sufficient. I mean, you have immunologists, right? So I never, you know, I have about two or three slides on the immune system. And I have so much respect for the immune system that I have to say, you know, obviously this is uh, not a course on immunology. I, I took a whole year of immunology when I was in naturopathic school. And, um, but, you know, in a nutshell, here's how it works. So it's a very complex system of a lot of things, of different cells uh, throughout certain organs, uh, thymus glands, spleen, lymph nodes. They're found uh, on your skin. They're found everywhere in your body. And, of course, uh, to simplify, what they do is, you know, they, they're there to protect you, right? They're there to... Uh, they're, they're your military. They're your armed forces. Something don't don't look right. I'm gonna attack, right? Something looks different than me. I'm gonna attack. Something looks um, cancerous or some sort of fungi or some sort of bacteria. I'm gonna attack, right? And it's a very sophisticated system. It uses cytokines a lot. So cytokines are different chemicals that activate other immune immune cells, right? So they're messenger cells or messenger chemicals that activate other cells. Um, of course, uh, you know, what tends to happen sometimes? Well, where, you know, sometimes your immune system can go against you and, and can attack you. Uh, and that, that's, what, um, that, what, that's what leads to an autoimmune disease where, you know, you can, it, it can attack your thyroid and that'll be, you know, Hashimoto's or attacks your, you know, different cells of your body, like in lupus or, your myelin sheath, like in multiple sclerosis and so forth. So your immune cells can actually attack you. And, you know, in, in, in those kind of instances. Here's, a, here's the, the thing with the use of a AHCC, because a, a question that comes up is, hey, if my patient has an autoimmune disease, or if they have a family history of autoimmune diseases, can, can, can they take AHCC? The question is, the, the answer is yes. AHCC is not so much a immune stimulating compound or stimulating compound, it's an immune modulator. So there's a difference. Immune stimulating means that it increases immune cells at all cause. Immune modulating means that it only increases certain immune cells as needed, okay? So that's an important um, thing to consider with regards to patients who either have an autoimmune disease or a strong family history of autoimmune diseases. So one of the things, so the other thing that uh, our um, immune cells look out for is cancer cells, right? So I, I you know, one, and you know, you never want to oversimplify what causes cancer. And patients want to know, hey, so, you know, what, what caused my breast cancer? What caused my brain cancer? What, what caused my prostate cancer? You never really want to, you know, oversimplify. So, there's a lot of factors. And of course, people say, oh, absolutely, stress. Yeah, I remember, you know, I was going, you know, 15 years ago, I was going through a nasty divorce. And, you know, two years later, that, you know, I, you know, we went to court and it was just ugly. And, and then I developed cancer. Okay, well, that's not, you know, that's not a, 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 a you know, and, and, and awkward type of, of reasoning, 
Um, but what happens when, when you're stressed out, right? What is happening through, to, your, to, to one's body when they're stressed? Well, their immune system is dropped because of the over-release of cortisol and other chemicals, right? So it goes back to the immune system. Um, of course, and then and there's other like inflammatory responses and things like that. But you, one of the main things you want to do to, your, you know, to help your patients is, you know, boost their immune system, can, keep their immune system healthy. Well, how do you do that? Well, there are many ways to do that, right? Obviously, eating, you know, proper diet, right? Plant-based food, things like the thing, you know, not, you know, being, staying away from food intolerances, perhaps gluten in some people, things like that. Um, you know, proper sleep, it's important. And, and the proper use of dietary supplements, like AHCC, for example. Okay, so AHCC, for anybody trying to boost immunity, it's, I, I, in my opinion, is a must. And, and, and I'll be more specific in, in, in a second. All right, so the immune, so what does it do? So it improves natural killer cells. Once again, it doesn't necessarily stimulate natural killer cells, it improves it, it is a, it is an, is a modulator of, uh, of, of the immune system, immune cells. So natural killer cells, so you remember there are T cells or B cells, there, there are quite a few immune cells. Um, natural killer cells do a variety of things. But they're the main group of our main defense against cancer. So we want to do everything to keep our natural killer cells nice and strong. Okay. So um, AHCC also improves cytokine production, right? So these are the important chemicals are, that stimulate other, uh, other immune cells. They improve T cell uh, activity. They improve macrophage activity and they improve and increase dendritic cells. And dendritic cells are just cells that are found in different parts of the body, like your skin, um, intestines, and so forth, nasal area, and so forth. Again, these are all related to immune cells and immuno, uh, immune chemicals. So why, I mean, as I travel, and I do quite a lot of lecturing throughout the country, even internationally, and I'm finding that I, almost always have to answer a question on, a, on AHCC. And the question is why are, you know, why are our physicians so into this product what, and, and, this, and this compound? Well, many reasons they see, you know, clinically they see that it's effective, right? Um, it offers, you know, high levels of, 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 you know, modulatory effects to natural killer cells, right? It, it, you know, there's a lot of science behind it. You know, I got to tell you, I ran clinical trials in, you know, at Columbia University when I was there, and it is grueling to do a clinical trial, grueling experience, um, getting a trial together, getting the right design, getting funding, getting enough patients enrolled, and it's even harder for natural compounds for several reasons. Number one is because then you have to apply for what's called an IND which means that you're, you're studying a drug. So there's the it, it significantly increases the cost. Well, AHCC is not a drug. So you have to kind of go in that rabbit hole. The other thing is that um, if you're running a placebo controlled trial, well, natural compounds like AHCC is widely av available in the market. So it's hard to have a placebo arm when, you know, these these compounds are widely available so these are it's very difficult so anytime there's research done on any natural compound it's really you know meaningful and it's a big deal so AACC has tons of basic science clinical trials and human clinical trials all right and many other studies show that it is indeed effective um certainly there's a lot of anecdotal evidence um suggesting that hey this is this is a really good compound and and is really good to use and I haven't witnessed any toxicity with AHCC other than some gastric discomfort, particularly in the elderly, okay? So that's the only, um, I wouldn't say toxicity, I would say, you know, uh, adverse effect, I would say, uh, or, or side effect uh, that I've seen, you know? So, you know, elderly, let's say an 85-year-old uh, person who has a compromised digestive system, then they kind of um, it kind of either soften their stools or uh, or or bloats them or they just have a hard time handling it. 
Okay, that's the only um, adverse event that I've seen. All right, so how about for cancer specifically? Well, I've kind of mentioned a lot for cancer and, and, and in general, but um, here's how it works. Um, in general, in patients who um, undergo conventional therapies, chemotherapy, radiation, et cetera, it reduces the toxic load and it improves the quality of life. And I'm going to give you some citations in a second, but that's the basic gist. So it, it is the one is safe to take and it does not interfere with any of the conventional therapies for cancer. Number two, it significantly improves the quality of life and reduces toxicity from those treatments. Then of course, there's a the immunomodulatory effect, right? Uh, it increases all these, um, all these um, um, cytokines uh, like, tum like TNF, uh, tumor necrosis factor, right? So you need TNF to induce apoptosis. Um, another cytokine, gamma interferon, um, interleukin 12, right? It increases interleukin 12, which um, significant. So typically, interleukin 12 is significantly decreased, uh, particularly during chemotherapy, right? So it kind of offsets that. Uh, another, um, it decreases circulating levels of a compound called IAP, immunosuppressive acidic protein which is involved in not letting tumors die, right? So this IAP thing is not a good thing. It doesn't let tumors die and it decreases the levels of that. And um, another tumor uh, promoting chemical, uh, tumor growth factor beta, uh, that's also decreased. All right, so here's a study that came out on pancreatic cancer. I, I found it to be um, in my opinion, pretty compelling. So they looked at 75 subjects, a randomized clinical trial, uh, patients with pancreatic cancer receive, receiving uh, gemcitabine uh, or, G, or gem for, uh, for, for their disease. Uh, patients took a dose of six grams of AHCC, and then there was a placebo arm. Then, um, so what, what happened? Uh, so they split them up uh, roughly 40 to 35. And here are the results. C-reactive proteins uh, elevation and, uh, excuse me, C-reactive protein and albumin with decline in the AHTC group, which is, you know, uh, a good thing in this situation. Albumin not leading to excess um, swelling and, and, and water retention. C-reactive protein is an inflammatory marker. Most importantly, patients who were taking AACC had um, less uh, taste or tasting problems, right? So typically, these drugs have a negative effect on, on taste. That's why patients don't want to eat. Well, that's one of the reasons, other than um, they're kind of, they cannot tolerate a lot of food, but they, they have less flavor and so forth. So um, AAC, the AACC group reduced any type of taste issues and problems. Um, in terms of prognostic score, so this is a, a score that they have when in patients that take chemotherapy and kind of gauge, um, you know, what the prognosis may be. Um, it was more it was more favorable in the AHCC group versus the control group. Lastly, um, the the quality of life in patients taking AHCC was which was much greater in terms of just tiredness and fatigue and these kind of things, which of course chemotherapy induces more fatigue in patients. And this was uh, published in 2006 in Nutrition and Cancer. So um, there you have it, that's one. Another study in breast cancer, and AATC reduced neutropenia in a group of patients, uh, breast cancer patients um, on chemotherapy. Right, so neutropenia, of course, is is exactly what you don't want, and is is one of the most um, significant side effects in patients taking chemotherapy. Right, reduction of these immune cells. So, I mean, I might be preaching to the choir here, but 
bear with me here a second. Chemotherapy is a toxin. Chemotherapy is a cancer carcinogenic agent. Okay, so what happens with chemotherapy, and not only chemotherapy, with radiation therapy, oftentimes, is that there, there's a development of secondary cancers within five to 10 years if the patient is, you know, if the patient lives that long. All right? So, and one of the reasons why that happens is because of neutropenia, right? This reduction in, in immunity, which now allows all these other cancer cells to kind of have a party in our patient's body. So AHCC can significantly reduce um, uh, this, this, this neutropenic effect from the use of chemotherapy, all right? And in, in none of these studies, there's any evidence that uh, AACC interfered with, 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 the, with, with the therapy itself, with chemotherapy, in any negative, in any negative way. Other clinical studies uh, with regards to cancer, um, there was a study in liver cancer, a prospective study showing that um, those on AATC live longer without recurrence. Uh, study in stomach cancer, which is obvious stomach cancer is very common, is probably one of the most common cancers in Asian countries. Uh, patients showed a, uh, an enhanced five-year survival rate. Um, Placebo-controlled study in liver cancer showed prolonged survival and, though, and, and better quality of, quality of life uh, in those taking AHCC. And um, in a study uh, done at Yale Medical School showed that there was a significant cytokine production, tumor necrosis factor, and things like that uh, in patients that were taking AHCC. How does it work? I think we mentioned it already in many different ways. It's a uh, it's a multimodal action uh, uh, approach. It's, um, it's, it works in different ways in terms of regulating the immune system. It stimulates uh, T cells. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's more of a modulator, stimulating cytokines, which cytokines, stimulating cytokines are very, very important in this particular, you know, dealing with cancer. And um, that's the main mode of action. I think that I think the takeaway here is is what it does to natural killer cells. I think um, that's one of the one of the biggest benefits. Um, so now let me say this. I'll tell you how I use uh, AATC in my clinic. Okay. AATC, I find it to be extraordinarily useful during the flu season. So anywhere between October and March, October and April, I personally take AATC and all my patients, particularly, you know, um, and we can have the debate of, hey, flu vaccine, do we need it? We don't need it and so on and so forth. I personally, you know, don't do the flu vaccine. I've ne I never have um, and I've been just fine. But there are patients, you know, I try as a clinician, you know, I have biases like everyone else and I try to be objective with my biases. I try to not, um, not impose my opinions. I try to be objective. So um, I, I don't tell people, hey, don't do the flu vaccine. You know, they, if they get it, they get it. And if they don't, then they don't. But I, you know, what do you see when people uh, you know, succumb to the flu vaccine is that oftentimes they get the flu and sometimes worse you know, after the flu vaccine than, than, than those who don't get it at all. So uh, AHCC, I find it to be extreme, extremely useful in, uh, during flu season. And the elderly people, with, el with the elderly, by the way, the, as people get, you know, as we all get older, um, one of the things that most elderly people succumb to is, you know, like pneumonia and things of the sort, which is an, an immunodeficiency disease, really, where the, the immune system is so compromised that they can't find, they can't find, uh, it can't find pneumo, pneumococcus or any type of bacteria like that. So AATC, I find it to be useful. Once again, one of the side effects, side effects I've seen is this, I, this thing of, you know, gastric problems. How do I resolve that issue in elderly patients? I ask them to open up capsules and uh, put it in their yogurt or something like that. Okay. And that kind of, that helps with the digestive aspect. So 
I find it incredibly useful for uh, preventing and co-management of the flu. Uh, patients who are un undergoing chemotherapy during and after chemotherapy, I have them take it. And sometimes they do because they're saying, hey, I want to be proactive and I don't care what my oncologists say. And other times they don't because they don't want to. Well, typically they come see me. Uh, they, they take what the, you know, whatever it is that I suggest for them. And, and I'm, during radiation and chemotherapy, I don't over prescribe things. I, um, you know, AHCC is one of the main things and perhaps curcumin is, are one of the things that I uh, prescribe during treatment. After treatment, it's a, a, few, a, a lot of things and that's a different story for a different day. Um, I don't see a lot of HIV patients, but there's some evidence that it may help with that. Um, it, there's some evidence that it inhibits the uh, HPV or human papilloma virus. Okay, I, I don't deal a lot with, um, with uh, uh, issues with patients uh, with HPV, but you know, that's another, that's in the literature. Um, so yeah. That's so okay. So then, um, in patients with low grade cancer, let's say low grade prostate cancer, low grade breast cancer, where the chances of a recurrence is not that high, I don't necessarily prescribe AHCC in that circumstance. I prescribe AHCC in moderate to more severe cases of prostate, uh, prostate cancer or recommendations in any type of cancer okay in the more severe cases the more uh the, the more high risk type of cancer the ones that are potentially more deadly okay the reason for that is because there are a bunch of other things that i'm trying to do in a patient with low risk cancer right they maybe cancer is not you know maybe cancer is not the most uh the most threatening disease that may kill them first Maybe it's heart disease. Maybe their lipids are, you know, completely un imbalanced and they're met they have metabolic syndrome and they have low-grade prostate cancer. Well, in that situ situation, a heart attack will kill this guy, not prostate cancer. So I have to um, make recommendations accordingly. And of course, our patients are only going to take but so many supplements. So that's my rationale and thinking. Uh, a clinical rationale and, and thought process there. All right, so um, dosing, let's talk about dosing. For prevention, I do about 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams a day. I personally do 1,500 milligrams a day uh, throughout flu, uh, the flu season, okay? The therapeutic dose, in cancer, let's say, it's 3,000 milligrams a day. It's actually best to take away from food, which means um, it's best to take 30 minutes before a meal or two hours after a meal, okay? Um, what else? Um, patients with hepatitis C can also take the, this type of supplement, um, AHCC, at about 3,000 milligrams a day. Uh, and there's some documentation on on uh, on that kind of on on the benefit of taking AHCC with Hep C and patients who have Hep C. Um, and that is it. Again, in in so and okay, in young kids, you may you it may you know so young kids typically um, don't uh, young kids meaning children, whatever ages 10, 11, 12, um, opening up capsules and mixing it with their drinks. Um, it's the way to go. I, I don't think they'll taste, uh, particularly if it's some sort of a juice, they won't taste uh, um, the, 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 the flavor of the, uh, of, of the, you know, of the AHCC. And the elderly with digestive issues, um, they have to open up capsules and, and mix it with food. It might decrease the absorption rate just by a tad, but um, again, um, it, it, you know, the benefits might outweigh the uh, the side effects. There's a good book out on Amazon called Thrive Don't Only Survive for Prostate Cancer. 
okay, okay, I, it's my book. It's my book. So I am a bit biased. Um, <laughs> so um, this is this is a this was a labor of love putting this book together with you know three young young kids at home and a and a clinic at NYU that uh, you know that it was uh, you know it's very busy. Uh, so I put this book together really to help to give uh, to give men and actually their partners, uh, their spouses or partners a roadmap as to here's what you need to do. Here are the, you know, here's what, how you need to think. Um, here is the lifestyle prescription for, to beat prostate cancer, not die from it. And actually, not only not die from it, but live, live your best life, uh, you know, before and after prostate cancer. Um, one of the things that I talk in the book about is this whole idea of a survivor. Uh, you know, I'm a cancer survivor. I'm not a big fan of that term. And the reason for that is because what does, what does that word imply, right? Well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of just, just making it. I'm, I'm just getting through as opposed to, hey, I'm thriving. Yeah, you know, a crappy deck of cards were given them to me. But hell, you know what? I'm going to play a good game here. I'm going to play the best game I can with these cards. So, you know, words are powerful. Words mean a lot. So I try to, um, certainly in, in the book and in my practice, I, I don't use the word survivor much. Uh, and, I, and I get it. I'm not, you know, oblivious to the fact that, hey, you first have to survive before you thrive. Of course. Yeah. Uh, okay. But once we get beyond that, particularly in cases of remission, I think we have a better opportunity to, uh, to, to change the, the, the view, change the mindset, and, and live the best life one can after that diagnosis. So that's just my, my two cents. All right. Thank you uh, for hanging out with me tonight. That's out with one word. Did you know that? That out with is one word? I didn't know that. <laughs> that's a typo. Um, here's some good resources for you. On uh, Natural Medicine Journal, there's actually an excellent article on AACC that you must read if you're really interested in you know, in, in, the, in more of the details of this topic. Obviously, QOL Labs, great company. Um, thank you again for having me. Um, you got to go to their website and look at their research. Um, if you're interested in men's health or prostate cancer, um, drgeo.com, that's my website. I, I write a lot about those kind of topics. And XY Wellness is a prostate cancer specific nutrition supplement company that, of course, carries AHCC, but other interests interesting things there as well. So um, I'm definitely able and willing to answer any questions at this time. Thank you, Dr. Gio. Um, yeah, one of the questions that came in uh, early on was, do you find it beneficial in aggressive advanced prostate cancer after radical prostatectomy and with hormone blockade therapy? And if so, what dose do you recommend? No chemo or radiation? Thank you. I was just drinking some water. Good question. Question. Okay, so on hormone therapy, after prostatectomy, no chemo or radiation. The answer is yes. The dosage is 1,500 milligrams a day. I try to save the 3,000 for, uh, well, let me say this. No, there's two reasons. Number one is because I want to limit the amount of pills that my patients take, number one. And I'm sensitive to all my patients' pockets. I don't know if my patient is a billionaire and I do have some or they're just working class. I always want to be careful and sensitive to their pockets. Based on that, I also prescribe. So what I do in patients on androgen deprivation therapy or hormone therapy is I have them take about 1,500 um, units a day of AHCC uh, along with a few other things. Thank you. Um, the second one we have here, is there an effect on hepatic phospholipid levels with AHCC is the first question. Uh, and there's a couple more right after that, but I'll give you that one first. So is there, can you repeat the question here? Sure. Is there an effect on hepatic phospholipid levels with AHCC? Uh, yes, I have not seen that. No. Okay. Yeah. And the second part of the question is, is there an effect on IL-6 besides IL-12 with AHCC? No, that's, uh, a, that's a good question because not all interleukins are really good for you, right? And, and um, you know, there's like, you know, uh, 12, 15 inter types of interleukins. So they're based on the literature that I've seen, 
and I've pretty thoroughly looked at it. There's no effect that I've seen on interleukin six. I don't know if they, if the research looked at inter, the researchers looked at interleukin six, but there's yeah, I, I haven't seen any negative or or, or positive effect on interleukin uh, six. Okay, great. Um, thank you, Dr. Gio, and thank you everyone for attending today's webinar, The Benefits of Active Hexose Correlated Compounds in Cancer. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please contact Dr. Gio. Uh, he put his information there. We'll also be putting this uh, follow-up email with the next few days to the recording. For So if anybody missed it, obviously everyone was here on the call today, but if you just want to refer to what you heard and weren't sure what uh, what the information was at the time, uh, we'll be putting it up live and then, you know, making recommendations based on that. There'll be also the slide information. Um, so yeah, learning more about Keolab's products. Thank you so much, Dr. Gio, for reaching out and putting this presentation together. Uh, on behalf of Keolabs and our presenter, Dr. Gio Spinoza, thank you for joining us and have a great rest of your day. Okay. Thank you. Thanks.